Okay, let's make sure that we're ready to go. Or we should be ready to go here. And yes, we're ready to go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports Online. Without further ado, we've got Uncle James Adibashir in the room. Uncle, how are we doing? We're doing pretty good. Good, good stuff, Uncle. How, how are things generally? Everything's going pretty well. Pretty okay. Relaxed, everything's going well. Okay, let's get a follow-up story uh, regarding, um, obviously, first of all, news regarding Povetkin and your training camp and with Joshua. What's the latest on that? What's the latest developments on that at the moment? Everything is up in the air right now. But uh, I didn't think that uh, last wrinkle being with Pavekin was a good mix because I, I would think that Pavekin would want a taller a, uh, sparring partner. So okay. I opted to try uh, into the Anthony Joshua's camp because uh, Vlad would be better suited to emulate Pavetkin for Joshua as opposed to emulating Joshua for Pavetkin. Okay. Well, that, that made pretty sense to me as well, you know. Um, so, uh, what? how far are you with that at the moment in terms of those negotiations? Well, we're right in the middle right now. Just waiting to hear back from the, the Joshua camp. Okay. Um, we do know at the moment, one of the guys, the chief sparring partner at the moment for Joshua is Martin Bacoli, and he's a, a fighter, Billy Nelson. He was on our channel up to a couple of days ago, and he heard the story regarding yourself and Povetkin and Serenko and Joshua. And he said that, well, the chief sparring partner at the moment is uh, Martin Bacoli. Are you aware of Martin Bacoli? No, and I'm not trying to be a chief anything. I just want to be a sparring partner to keep my guy busy. That's all. Right. Okay. He can be. He can be. He can be the chief all he wants to. I'm not looking to be that. Okay. That's not the. Go ahead, Uncle. That's not my. That's not my goal. My goal is not to be a chief anything. My goal is to keep my guy busy with quality sparring when he's not fighting. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, um, let's uh, let's keep it moving. Okay, so it's up in the air about that. Let's talk about the weekend's boxing. As you know, or you may not know, Anthony Yard, the new world number one WBO uh, ranked fighter, was out in uh, Atlantic or the uh, in the USA watching at the Hard Rock Cafe, uh, Bivol. And Kovalev. Um, if I was in the States, I would have been there to meet him, you know. Fantastic. That's about two hours from where I live at. Okay, okay. Um, I, would have, I would have drove there to spend the weekend there, out of to, to see him and meet him. Fantastic. I'm sure I'm sure that meeting is going to happen sooner rather than later. Um, before this fight, with Kovalev and Alvarez, we knew there were potential warning signs in this fight for Kovalev regarding his uh, extracurriculum activities with the uh, drink. Um, it was well documented that he liked a bit of a drink. He also made it quite clear that he didn't rate American trainers very highly. And John David Jackson, in his defense, said, well, he didn't want to listen to what I've got to say. He wants to do his own thing. So... Now we see Kovalev on the canvas getting knocked out by Alvarez. Could that have been avoided? Was Alvarez always going to knock Kovalev out, regardless of what the situation was? Or I, I think that it was a pretty competitive fight. You know, they both started out, you know, looking uh, like the timing was off, the rhythm was off, but the fight heated up. They both began to, to land and do uh, execution. From my point of view, they was executing, you know, in a timely fashion. They were looking good. They were heating up, and he got caught. He got caught with a punch that he did not see coming. And those are the ones that hurt you the most, the ones that you don't see. 
Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, he got nailed. He got nailed with a punch he didn't see. Up until that point, I thought the fight was pretty competitive. Alvarez seemed to be able to control Kovalev with a jab. At, at no point in time what, did I see any change. You see, a lot of things in boxing, like when a fighter, an on top fighter, is then suddenly being pushed back with jabs to the face and to the head. I don't see corners making adjustments. I just see on top fighters doing well on top. But when there's a crisis, a lot of these fighters don't know what to do. That's the point that I was trying to drive home to you the last time we spoke. You know, it's, it's easy to be a, a, a trainer when there's no crisis. But that's when the training technique, that's when the training application, that's when the training knowledge comes through in times of crisis. And I noticed that too, that he was getting hit with a stiff, consistent jab. Exactly. And he wasn't making, he wasn't making no adjustments to deal with that jab, to get under it, to get around it, to counter it. It, it was no, no adjustments. There, there was a lack of a double jab from Kovalev. There was a lack of um, any sort of feints. He just seemed to go keep coming forward in straight lines. There was no, there was no feinting. There was no setting no traps. It was just come forward and throw as many bombs as I can. I'm walking straight into a jab all the well, time. I, I just see him faint some. He, 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 he made some early, early in the fight. He, he was feigning coming forward. He was coming. He was making good feints, but he just wasn't doing anything off of those feints. Well, but, that, that, mean, but exactly. You can only faint for so long, but you have to act. On the faint, because but it's like, but uncle, that's like me fainting uh to the wall. I mean, faint, faint, faint. But at the end of the day, the faint is only. Th I mean, you're the boxing guy. You're you're you're, you're the guru. But at the end of the day, faint, faint, faint. The faint is to get you into position to throw your shots, or to faint to get yourself out of a position. You faint, get yourself out of position. Or fainting, or fainting is just to get reactions. Or yeah, exactly, or to get reactions. But I mean, there's only so much of that fainting you do. You've got a one way or the other, you've got to look for a reaction and then do something. And Kovalev didn't do that, so that was fainting for fate and sake. Well, you know, at the end of the day, he didn't punch off of those feints. That's it. You don't, have to punch off the, you don't have to punch off the first, you don't have to punch off the second, third, or fourth, or fifth, but you have to punch at some point in between those feints. You have to punch before you faint and punch at if. That, absolutely we have in the room actually uh just he's just coming to the room himself uh baba tunde ajaya the trainer of anthony yard and this is what he's got to say he says good evening my brother baba tunde here so tunde ajaya he says um my boy will destroy them all he is a lying everything is timing ingram as you know baba tunde says he continues by saying it was a good experience seeing it all live we know we have we are up against what we up against and are confident we will get there. Everyone should watch out. Lying is coming. Uncle. Well, you know, uh, Uncle, you're breaking up. Start again. You cannot argue with somebody that's undefeated. I think that uh, Anthony Yard has some, some education to still gain before he goes up top of Hold on, Uncle. Hold on, I think you're breaking up. Let's...
based on what he's done already, of course they're going to be enthusiastic about it. I would expect that to be less, but I would be cautious. I would be cautious. Of course, uh, of course, you'd be cautious. We've had some breaking up, or we've just made, we're making some adjustments now. We've got the we're using EE Wi Fi, and that clearly is not great. So I've just switched it to my home Wi Fi with BT. And hopefully, we'll get a better connection from uh, Uncle Bashir. Uncle, um, it's all this thing about timing and picking the right fights at the right time for your fighter. We just saw last night uh, Natasha Jonas get knocked out she was a gb squad fighter um unbeaten and before she fought everyone in it well the commentary team was saying ah oh, natasha jonas she's a different level she's a different gravy she's brilliant she'll beat all the girls that are around her we've got a super fight to look forward to with her and katie taylor and before we know it natasha jonas is on the canvas so it's all about as you say oh, definitely yard. Definitely yard. reminds me of another fighter. Well, he was trained in Britain anyway. He reminds me of a good puncher. You know, he's having things his own way. Um, but he, he, I, when I think about Anthony Yard, I think about John DeBeast Mugabe. Okay. And they, they bit off Marvin Hagler when they didn't have to. They didn't have to. There were other guys around that they could have chosen but they chose Hagler. And as a result, John Mugabe was never the same after that knockout loss. So I would be hesitant, you know, about who I put Anthony Yard in because he's looking good at the level he's at. Like I said, he hasn't seen the upper echelon of the late heavyweight division yet. So I'd be careful about what I put him into. I just let him get a little more time, a little more seasoning before I put him in. It would be nice to see Yard do 12 rounds. Um, to see for him, for his own personal um, knowledge, that he knows he can do 12 rounds. I remember watching Sergey Kovalev not do 12 rounds, and then he fought Bernard Hopkins. And at that fight, he didn't know whether he could do 12 rounds or not. So, I mean, he did the training in camp, but he had to do the 12 rounds. And about round 10 or 11, he realized, you know what, I can do the 12 rounds. And in the 12th round, he put his foot down and he looked like he could have forced a stoppage against Hopkins. Now, had he known he could have gone 12 rounds that fight previously, I think he would have stopped Hopkins earlier, stopped up Hopkins because he knew he could do the 12 rounds. So, I think... Possibly so, possibly so. I remember, I remember watching that fight also. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he handled Hopkins easily. Yes. He did. So, even though Hopkins was at an advanced age, but he handled Hopkins easily. Now, so one of the things, obviously, for Yard would be nice to see him do the 12 rounds distance. I'm not, I personally, I'm not all this, um, I'm not so uh, hung up about him fighting British fighters and beating British fighters. Because if he beats British fighters, that doesn't equal him winning a world title. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I mean, he's getting good exercise. You know, he's staying busy and he's fighting uh, somewhat competitive fights. Okay. Guys that well, he's fighting guys that's taken him, taken him a few rounds, but the upper echelon is outside of Britain. It's, it's world contenders. You know, I like what I saw in Alvarez. I saw a good jab. I saw resilience. Because when Kovalev got tough with Alvarez, Alvarez got tough with Kovalev back. So I think that the real test is outside of what he's been doing in Britain. I think the real test lies outside of that. Uh, uh, he should be looking for guys like, like uh, Sol Sullivan Barrera, you know, yeah. Uh, Chalim Chalimba, you know, those kind of guys. He needs those kind of fights right now. That would that be nice. A Chalimbe. Uh but again, let's talk about the amateur experience and amateur background. We know that Yard and I don't want to keep using this as an excuse, it is what it is. He's only had twelve amateur bouts, twelve novice bouts. I mean I don't put a lot of stock in that. Okay. I don't put a lot of, you know, in some cases it's very 
invalid other pieces is invalid. So I don't put a lot of stock in that. Because from what I've seen of Yard, we can throw the amateur career out the window. He's doing pretty good as a pro. So I don't I don't put a lot of stock in that. You know, you know I'm a Tim Witherspoon fan. Tim Witherspoon did not have an amateur career. Maurice Harris did not have an amateur career. And Tim Witherspoon won the Henry Championship twice. And Harris went all the way to the number one spot twice without amateur background. So I'm not big on that. I think it's the individual, the motivation of the individual's mentality and his courage. You know, I think that's what puts them in the driver's seat. Okay. Um, so for you, just an example. Um, let's not use Yard. Let's use an example. You have a fighter. I mean, you've got Serenka, but Serenka has lots. Of, has had lots of amateur experience, so that probably wouldn't be fair. Um, maybe, maybe um, Ruhan Vista would be a good example, would it not? Yes. Ruhan, you, you're managing Ruhan Vista at the moment, training Ruhan Vista. Um, yeah. And Ruhan Vista hasn't got much of an amateur background. He's you taking him on he's as got a. None. Okay, he's, he's got, got none. Amateur. Okay. Okay. But again, but again, he's he's on the job learning. You know, he has no amateur experience at all. Okay. Um, Tunde, uh, Ababa Tunde or Tunde Ajay, the trainer of Anthony Yard, says this: "It's a marathon, not a sprint. We are developing and not will not be rushed. People can talk, but we have a plan. Remember, it takes time to churn the milk in order to realize the butter." I can identify with that. You know, I, I mean, he's not talking to a spring chicken. I've been around this thing forever, probably okay. before he was born. So I understand where he's coming from. And I suggest the same thing. But he's in the number one spot now. It's sort of like uh, Vargas was uh, when Vargas was fighting at, at uh, welterweight, the junior middleweight, I believe it was. Vargas came into the number one spot and he was forced to fight. He ran into De La Hoya, he got stopped. He ran into Tito Trinidad, he got stopped. He ran into Wiki Wright, he ran into the upper echelon. He, in, in my opinion, Vargas was in the fire before he could handle it. That's why he wasn't successful up there. And I'm suggesting the same thing for Anthony Yard. So yeah, he's got to take his time. You know, don't rush him. He's, he's got some skills. He's got some things working for him. But as I said about Vargas and about Mugabe, we we, we spoke to learn from experience. You know, you got to be careful about how you match it because you never know what's going to happen when you go up there and you just jump out the window and take fights. So yeah, I can understand where you're coming from. Uh, everybody, everybody, everybody's got a plan. Everybody, everybody says the right thing. Everybody's always saying the right thing, but saying the right thing. And doing the right thing are two different things. He's the number one contender. And soon the commissioner is going to say piss or get off the pot. Yep, eventually they will. Um, I want to talk a bit about Kovalev and this uh, this alcoholic issue and this, this, this love of alcohol and how much that affects a fighter and the we've seen the effects. I mean, the first time I was concerned about Kovalev is when he fought Chilimbe, where they were saying, oh, Kovalev had the cold, and Kovalev was just like making excuses for Kovalev. But then I started hearing stories in the background that Kovalev was a man that loved his drink. Now, if you're a person that loves your drink, loves your food, loves to booze, loves to party, loves to live a wild life, what sort of effect can that have on the body as a boxer, and what should we? What are the telltale signs of for a fighter? Because Kovalev looked in great shape physically, but when it came down to it, what happened? You know, you can you can put on mascara, and makeup, and stuff, but it all comes off under the big lights. Boxers are unique athletes; they cannot do what basketball players, football players, soccer players, they can't do that. Boxers have to take one 
minute breaks and they got to get off the stool and they got to go back out there by themselves. No team, you know, no help. They got to go back out there. So you have to live a, a Spartan life. No drink, no excessive food, no greasy food. Everything has to be timely and respectfully done. Uh, Kofi Lennon, there's, there's been rumors about that he's had a bouts with alcoholism, you know. I don't know whether he's gotten it under control or not. I don't know. But I know, I do know in tough fights, it's going to show up. It's going to show up. Fifth to eighth round is going to show up to find mm-hmm. out, you know, if he's been doing it or has he gotten away from it. I just think that in the case last night, he got caught with a punch that he didn't see. He didn't see that punch coming. But I, I, I. It jarred him. It jarred him. It jarred him bad. The punch that you don't see, everybody in boxing knows the punch you don't see is the one that can hurt you the worst. But uncle, that that doesn't all that that takes a little bit away from what what um Alvarez was actually doing. He was working the body well. In my preview, I actually said that Alvarez had fast hands Alvarez and worked the body the well. Body. Alvarez working the body and a good jab. Yes. Alvarez got working the body late. He saw working the body late, you know. So he was he was chopping on the tree. No, no, I don't want to take anything away from Alvarez. Not at all. He was mixing his attack. Mm-hmm. Somebody in the corner must have lit a fire on there because he came out there in the sixth and seventh round with a vengeance. Mm-hmm. Somebody must have told him that this guy is tired. Jump on him. He said in his post-fight interview that he was feeling from the back the sixth round, uh, Kobler's power was going, he was tiring. And my prediction in this fight was, if there's going to be an upset, it'll be Alvarez that will cause the upset by stopping Kovalev mid to late rounds because of the body work and the question marks about Kovalev's fitness due to what he's well, doing. Alvarez a danger of any kind to Kovalev. And I wrote back and said that, yes, he is yes. a danger to Kovalev because I examined the body chemistry at the press conference, at the weigh-ins, and although they don't mean that much, they do mean something. I'm very observant about the body language, and I didn't like the body language of Kovalev. I did like the body language of Alvarez, because Alvarez had that look. They said, what is that look? He had that look of an undefeated fighter that intended to stay undefeated. He had that look that, no, I don't care what you do. I'm not intimidated by you, and I'm here to fight. On the other hand, Kovalev looked like he was trying to reassure himself. Yeah. With little antics, with little antics you know, like, Balling his fist and faint like he was going to punch Alvarez or stuff. So little things like that. Yeah, I studied the body. It was like he was trying to pump himself up, like he wasn't sure, like he like he tried to intimidate Alvarez, but the intimidation went in reverse against Kovalev. Um, so, would you say? Would it be unkind to say that Kovalev has been exposed as a flat track bully? Meaning that when it goes his way, he's great. But when you start putting it on him, he don't like it. Like I said, last night he put up a good fight. Last night he was putting up a good fight until he got clipped. You know, until he got clipped, that's when everything changed. The shot that he didn't see put him down, and he never collected himself properly. You know, he never collected himself properly. He never took a knee. You know, he never stayed down, took the four eight count. He never tried. He never tried to tie uh, Alvarez up. You know, he could have took a knee again. He could have took another knee. He already lost the round, so he should. Took so these are the things that a professional of his stature should know. But he got right back up each time. You know, and he lined himself up to be knocked down. Okay. He knows better knows that he should have stayed down. He knows that he should have tried to steal every 
second that he could to get to the end of the round. But instead, he got up, trying to fight, and got knocked out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Today's light heavyweights. I come from an era in the 60s and the 70s. And today's light heavyweights leaves much to be desired. When I watch them box, they leave much to be desired. Um, I like uh, Anthony Young because he, he reminds me a lot of fighters from the 60s and 70s in his approach, in his ring tactics, you know. He, he puts me in the mind of those guys. Uh, the John Contes, uh, Bonnie Johnsons, and Matthew Saad Mohammed, and those kind of guys. Those guys were warriors, but they had resilience and mentalities of steel. They came forward and they came in to do business. It was do or die. You know, that's how it was. You know, when I look at these guys now, at least I'm going to be this high. Um, Kovlev, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he's got left. I don't know what he's got left, but if he's going to be able to come back or what. That would be a good fight for y'all. I actually thought, after seeing Kovalev get beat, I actually, I, I, I would have stuck yard in with Kovalev. At this uh, point of his career, I'd stick him in with Kovalev. What did you say? At this point of Yard's career, I'm Kovalev's career, I would stick Yard in there with him. I don't, I don't think Kovalev gets any better, to be honest. No, I don't think it's going to get better. Either. I think that Anthony Yard. Like I said, he needs to fight Sullivan Barrera, Chalimba, and Kovlev. What about Joe? To... Well, hold on. What about Joe Smith? Oh. Joe Smith, the guy that knocked out Hopkins. Yeah, he can be in with you. Y'all can, can handle that. That's a good test. I mean, he needs a test. He needs a test. He needs to test the people that he's been in thus far has not provided that test for him. You know, so Joe Smith, uh, Barrera, Chalimba, I think those three guys would be in that in that testing area. I think he needs to be in one of those guys and find out where he is with that. I love to know what uh, Baba Tunde Ajayi, Baba Tunde, if you're still here on the line, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, last night, what it was like? Whether you saw got to see Kovalev and Bivol up close? Um, obviously, you saw them fight, but whether you got to talk to them afterwards or not, I'd love to know about that. Um, I, don't think, I don't think John is ready for Bivol. No, no, no. I think Bivol's a different kettle of fish altogether. Bivol's got movement. He's got hand speed. He's got power. He's more. Um, Far more rounded, and uh, at this point in time, I think Bivol's got a little bit too much. At this point in time, no, I think that would be too much for John right now. Bivol. Talk to me about Bivol. Yeah. What Bivol does well for you? He has excellent hand speed. Mm -hmm. He mixes his combinations up beautifully. He does. Yes, 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 yes. I've got somebody in the room here called Boxing Is Me, and he says that Bivol is a little green. Well, Bivol's beaten Sullivan Barrera, and he's beaten a, a now Chilimbe, two of the world's best, and he's beaten quite easily. To me, I don't know, he's saying he's green, but I think he he's an exceptional talent. And if he's green, then God forbid, I thought he looked really good last night. He's putting some ass whoopings on. Yeah. I don't see nobody around it right now. I mean, you got to get better beef. Better beef. Um, and there's another light heavyweight that's in 
the Gusek camp. He's coming. I think he won one of the WBO belts. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, God, Godzik, I think it is. And Godzik said, um, yeah. Usyk yeah. said, yeah. To, Usyk said to Godzik, interim belt is crap. There's bullshit. <laughs> Usyk turned around to Godzik because Godzik was an interim champion or something like that. And um, Usyk turned to him and said, It's bullshit. <laughs> well, uh, he, he can fight, that's for sure. He was in the camp uh, when I trained Usyk for the. Um, uh, who was the South African kid before? Uh, the last South African. Oh, you're talking about. Um, You talk about the guy that uh, um, what's his name's um, Martin 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 Bacole's brother, who um, Steve of uh, who uh, Bellu knocked out, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that guy. Yeah, him. Uh, and, uh, well, you, you, you get my point. Macabu, Macabu. In 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 I'd like to see. Is the better, better beef is the better puncher. But the better all around season fighter is Bibble. Green but, or not green, he's the better. Never, he's the never mind him. I, I I think he's gold, personally. There's no green about him. There's gold to me. Um, And I'd like to see that Bivol versus, um, what's the other gentleman then? Better uh, better beef. Uh, those two those two would be a great fight. That'd be a great fight. That'd uh, be a great fight. Eugene, our European, uh, Eastern European uh, boxing correspondent, who also you know well, Eugene, um, Uncle Bashir, says, uh, better beef, try, uh, uh, even Michael will throw better beef at Bivol 100%. Better beef, try to leave I Ivan, so it's time to cash out. So you can see Bivol, and he's basically saying better beef is going to get thrown to Bivol. So how does that fight turn up? I think that's a great fight. The pick them, that's a tough fight. For both guys, it's a tough fight. Have you... I'll say this one. I'll say this one. We have to spot smartly against Better Beef. Yes. Better Beef is an extremely, extremely hard puncher. He is. He is. Um, Do you know who Frank Buglioni is? Okay, well, we can't use him. Um, let me see. Who else? I think that Intuno fight for for Yard would be very difficult. He just, it's just just awkward, don't right, you think? He'd sure, mess Yard around a lot. Intuno is a lot bigger than Yard. It's cruiserweight, isn't it? Yeah, please. It's cruiserweight. My mistake. Yeah, he's, he's a lot thicker. He's a lot thicker than Yard. Eugene's uh, 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 also with Eddie Chambers to Machuno, you know. Yep. Yeah. Um, Evan Michael is a Canadian promoter who has Berbita, uh, Berbita, Berbita, uh Stevenson and Alvarez in the camp. So three of the best light heavyweights in the world he's got. And three of the world champions he's got. He's got three of the world champions. He's got this promoter has got three of the world champions. Berbita, Berbita, Babitov, uh, Stevenson, and Alvarez. Dang, he's wow. he's, he's doing. He's just doing as good as Al Heyman. What do you say? What do you say? He's got the royal flush of light heavyweight. Dang, yeah. Surprised he's not trying. <laughs> Dang. All he needs to do is sign Bivol now, and that's it. He's got the royal flush of light heavyweight. 
He could do an in-house tournament. He could do an in-house tournament himself. Steven, he got one thing that to the bank, that's the left hand. Stevenson versus Yard. How does that go? Huh? Stevenson versus Yard. It's a real hard fight. It just you know, you know the whole fight depends on what? How well does Yard take a punch? How how well does Yard take that left hand? That's kryptonite for most fighters. Stevenson brings only the left hand to the dance. If you can take away his left hand, you can beat him. If you can take away Stevenson's left hand, you can beat him. You don't have to take away that left hand. You have to crack him with your own right hand first. Stevenson's not got the greatest chin in the world. Or you try to crack him with a left hook. I mean, most people most people say that the right hand is the kryptonite for a sophomore. I said the left hook is the look there's one other guy we're forgetting my boy in the light heavyweight division uh badu jack yeah badu jack is a We fought Adonis. He took Adonis' best shots. Yeah, but he, he, he's got, he, you know, he, he still got to be proven. Adonis, to me, Adonis is just a one-handed fighter. But what a one-handed fight. He's one of the, the greatest pound-for-pound -pound punches we've got in the modern era. Yeah. You could put, but, but you could put, That's you could put that, you could put him in any era, uncle, couldn't you? Way. Well, that's like saying if you take away Deontay Wilder's right hand, he could be beaten. I mean, these are the things that make these guys great. No, it's possible. It's possible. It makes it easy to beat him if you could just take away the left hand. But, Uncle. If you take, if you take away Deontay Wilder's right hand, it's possible he could be beaten. How many, you know? how many, how many Bernard Hopkins have we got today? How many Andre Wards have we got in the world today that can take away... James Tony, these guys are masters. I don't, I don't understand how did Stevenson not fight Andre Ward. I just don't understand that. I know, I understand it because Ward would have taken away that left hand, got inside, and roughed up Stevenson on the inside. That's what would have happened. Stevenson didn't want any of that. Yeah, but Stevenson didn't even fight Kovalev. Well, I think. Kovalev didn't want the Stevenson fight. From what I understand, Stevenson wanted that fight, but they were trying to block out Stevenson from fighting Kovalev. Uh, well, who else did, did, did uh, Stevenson fight? Badu Jack. He fought Badu Jack, and he fought the man who was considered the man in the light heavyweight division in the beginning, um, Dawson. Dawson. Yeah. And I remember... Yeah. I remember back in the day, Stevenson at super middleweight and was hanging around for ages to fight, um, to fight Carl Froch. And he said, you know, I've felt waiting for Froch. I'm going up to light heavyweight. And Froch would rather fought Jean Pascal than fight Adonis Stevenson. What does that tell you? Jean Pascal. That's a good fight for Anthony Yard as well. Yeah, it is. That's a great fight for Anthony Yard. That's a great fight. That's a great fight. What happened with Alvarez and, and um, uh, Alvarez? And he, he, he stopped Butte. Yeah. What, did he, what, did he stop Pascal? I don't know. I can't remember. Somebody, somebody can tell us that. Pascal's a great fight for Yard. 
a great fight that he should be. That, that's a fight that he should be looking for. That's a great you know, fight. Chalimba, these kind of guys are the guys that can pull Yard over the over the over the finish line. I think that once he gets in with those guys, whether he beats him or whether he goes the distance with him and beats him, would be would take him a, a long way in people's views of him. But thus far, coming into the number one position, fighting the guys that he's fought thus far doesn't prove nothing on the world scale of course it doesn't but uncle you know you and i can talk about this and can understand it but a lot of people in boxing but first of all I'll ask the question a lot of people in boxing what are they looking at and two do they understand the process of managing a fighter and and, and building a fighter from a contender to a champion understand. Understand. because there are a lot of people in boxing today that haven't got a clue about managing a fighter they think right. it's all about sticking, like, like there are a lot of people who think it's great that David Allen's going in and having all these fights no. against these tough fights. Listen, I've watched Anthony Yard. I like him, you know, I like him. I like him. And, and, they, and they put them in with the right opponents. Yeah. So I, I like what I see him. I like what I see in him, you know. But I'm just concerned about him being in the number one position. That the, the sanctioned body is gonna say, look, we we we're ordering this this mandatory, you know. Who got who's got the number the uh, the the the, the WBO belt? Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah. 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 Alvarez is the champion. That's the belt he won last night. Well, well, that would be a uh, an interesting fight. Well, it took to me last night that Alvarez can be hurt. I mean, Kovalev hit him a couple of quite a few times, and there were times it looked like he had buzzed Alvarez, but Kovalev couldn't put it together. I think, um, well, we have to see he how he show some resilience in me. He did, he, he did. Showed... He got on his but he got on his bicycle as soon as he got there. Any trouble, he was gone, and he was boxing, and he showed a sterling jab. But I wouldn't shy away from Anthony Yard fighting Alvarez. I wouldn't I would either. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't either. So if that's if he's the number one contender, you take the fight with we'll a good fight. I would but I, personally if I'm if if I were managing Yard, I'd like to see Yard um get a twelve round under his belt and see him in a fight where he's got some resistance. Then we can say, okay. This is the resistance I'm putting in front of you now. Let's see how you do against it. If you blast that door down, you're ready to go. If you res if you if this guy takes your punching power for twelve rounds, and you know you you, you don't look so great, let's pull you back a bit. He needs one of those fights now, a gauging fight. Well, I, I don't know whether he's going to have that time. I think he's the number one contender. I think he's going to be in a fight for that title. But I wouldn't shy away from him. I think that um, he's in a position now where he may have to fight Alvarez. Uh, I think that Alvarez might be a shade better than Yard at this point. But having said that, Yard can reduce that with his punching power. Oh yeah, hell yeah. He can reduce that. He can he can level the playing field. That so boy. Can, let me see something. That, that boy, I've been, I've seen some guys spar, yeah, I've seen some big hitters, but that boy can punch, and he's, uh, when I hear some of them shots he, he, off the pads, and I've heard some heavyweights hit pads, this boy can crack, he can crack. I, I, I forget the pads, pads mean nothing, that, that means nothing. But, I've watched him in the rain, what I, I like, what I see in the rain, mm -hmm. you know, but he's gonna be in with a really good boxer, in Alvarez and that title is going to change Alvarez. It's going to make him a better fighter. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Confident. He's confident. You know, he's intelligent. He has a sterling jab and he has resilience. He has mental resilience. And that belt is going to make him a better fighter. So, yeah, I'd like to see Yard get in and fight Alvarez. He's the number one contender. Go ahead and take the fight. I mean, Yard is a young guy. What the heck? Take the fight. 
whatever happens, he can always bounce back. Yeah, we say that. We say that. We don't know. Their fight is that once they lose the unbeaten record, they're never the same fighter again. Depending on look at John Mugabe went and fought Marvin Hagler, as you said earlier, and we know what happened afterwards. Mugabe was never the same fighter. No, he was never the same fighter. Well, we don't want that, well, do you? Well, another fight he had to fight. Uh, Mike Quarry fought Bob Foster. He was never the same as the Bob Foster. So it's after just Bob Foster, Bob Foster knocked him out. Mike Quarry was never ever the same fighter. You know, but the good thing about this Alvarez is that, you know, coming into the fight last night, he only had 11 knockouts. The likelihood of him knocking out Yard is a, a long shot, you know. Yard has good eyes. He has good reflexes. He knows how to protect himself in the ring. So, yeah, this is a good fight. But this the thing is... is Going the distance, Sometimes, but the he, distance, he's Uncle. In the WBO. He's in the WBO, so he needs to go ahead and take that fight. Yeah, but he needs to know he can do the distance, Uncle. Uh, you know, him not being able to do, him not knowing he can do 12 rounds, and then him knowing he can do 12 rounds, that, you know, a fight he needs that for empowerment, don't you think? But the, but the point that I'm trying to make is will, will the, the organization allow that? And will that be some kind of a risk for him when he's in the number one spot? I say take the shot and worry about the other stuff later. You know, whatever you don't, whatever it's like, you, you want to go 12 rounds, go 12 rounds in the gym. Go 12 rounds in the gym. Go to 12 rounds in the gym six times. Go 12, 15 rounds in the gym three times. You know, you want to test, you want to test to see we are like, bring in some real circumstance. Put him in the, in the ring with two, maybe three good spawn partners and keep changing the spawn partners round after round after round. And let him go 15 rounds, let him go 12 rounds in the gym. But don't throw away just the number one spot. Don't gamble with that. He can get somebody in to go 12 rounds and cut him or something, you know what I mean? No, if he's in the number one spot, I say, look, take the shot. Alvarez is the champion. Take the shot. That's my position on it. That's what I would do. If I was the manager, if I was the trainer, I'd take the shot. Hello? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. So... <laughs> no, no, no. I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, I, I would take the shot. I wouldn't hesitate. I would take the shot. The blessing is that he's not the WBC, he's not the WBA, he's not the IBF, he's the WBO. And Alvarez took the belt last night. That might be the safest route for him to go to get the world championship now. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to, if you want to test him, test him in the gym. Or save him and go to the championship. He's the number one contender, fight for the title. It seems like it seems elementary to, for me that he would take that shot at Alvarez. He's probably the mandatory for that belt. Anthony Yard probably became the mandatory for the, the number one spot to fight for the title. Well, Frank Warren did say at the end of the year that Anthony Yard would be fighting for a title. So that's what the plan was. I don't know if that's changed, but that's what he said at the end of Yard's last fight. So... Well, no, this could be coming up to the end of the year. It looks like he's going to have to fight for that title. WBO is going to mandate him. Yeah, but that's... That you, okay, let's say he does win and he wins the title. That's more top... More, more money, more problems, more titles, more problems. You become the WBO champion. Then look who you've got in front of you. Stevenson, if he's still around. Bivol and uh, Babita. Yeah, but he got, he got some playtime. WBO let him go. You know, WBO let him go. He was in the title defense all week, title defense here, week title defense there. They won't throw him right in the fire, you know. 
he's, he would be a good looking champion. And they wouldn't throw away the fight. Possibly if he fought Alvarez, Alvarez might come back for a rematch. So he might get two, two fights out of those two guys. Kenny. Which, would be the safe, which would be the safest route for Anthony Gaw to take just to get his shoes wet in the division. Can he beat Alvarez? If you were going to do percentage-wise, what are the percentages of the yard winning against Alvarez and a yard losing against Alvarez? Right now, right now from where I'm sitting, I say 60-40. In yards' favour? No. In, in, no, no. in Alvarez' favour? Because Alvarez has been to the dance and he's won the belt via knockout. And believe me, that's going to give him a big boost mentally. He knows that he can do it. He knows that I can do it. I've been in there with the ex-champion. I took the belt. So, yeah, 60-40. You know, 60-40 Alvarez favor. What about Yard versus Stevenson in terms of percentages? Very risky. Very risky. Very risky. It's just like a wounded lion. You ever, you ever seen the hyenas trying to eat a wounded lion? <laughs> yeah. You know, how, you know the lion's weak. So they'll take a bite out of his butt here, a bite out of his leg there, and try to weaken him further. But every now and then that lion will leap out and grab one of the hyenas and crush his skull. And all the hyenas will say, shit, we'll be back two months later. The other hyenas will watch. That line, that weak line, would jump out and grab one of those high knees and crush his skull. Yes. And when those other high that they they say, you know what? This is not good right now. We'll come back a couple months from now, a couple weeks from now, and see if we can find this carcass. They leave, they leave below. Hyena is one of the most intelligent creatures around. When they see that line, that weak line, or what they thought was weak, when they see him lash out. They grab one of those hyenas and crush, crush his skull. He said, "I gotta go." He leave him alone. So that's that's Adonis Stevenson. He's an old guy, and just like uh, Mike Quarry versus Bob Foster. If I was to imagine for Mike Quarry in the light heavyweight division, Mike Quarry was a good looking light heavyweight, and he was coming along just fine. And then Bob Foster was nearly 40. And they came up and took on Bob Foster. And, and I remember that fight years ago. And I said, well, why are they going to take this old guy? I would let Bob Foster go out the pasture. Knowing the kind of punching power that Bob Foster had, I said, let him go out the pasture. I don't need him. Mike Quarry was a young guy. He could have waited Bob Foster down. Marvin Hagler was an old guy. John Mugabe could have easily have avoided Marvin Hagler. He didn't have to take that fight. He could. My John Mugabe was fighting at 154. Hagler was fighting at 160. Mugabe moved up to take that fight. Mugabe could have stayed at at at, 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 at uh, junior middleweight, and he could have waited. One fight, two fights, Hagler would have been gone. And, and, and Mugabe probably would have fared better had he just let that fight go bad, but he didn't. Mike Quarry didn't, and both of them suffered for it. They were never the same after those knockdowns. Never the same. So, yeah, that, that, that's like you just said the average person listening have no clue as to how to move a fighter successfully. They don't. You got to look, look at the landscape. Adonis Stevens is an old lion whose time is when it's coming to an end. You know, but he can still, he's that lion that can reach out and grab you and crush your skull. <laughs> he still has the might, the power to crush your skull. And Another thing is, Adonis Stevenson stays in good shape when he steps in that ring. He's in that ring to fight. Absolutely. You know, so he's that wounded lion 
that can pull a, a, a trick out of the hat. I would stay away from him. You know, if I was a young fighter, I would stay away from him. Because he's proven. That right hand, that left hand is proven a dangerous weapon. Eugene wants to know what, what does uh, Stevenson versus Gavotsky look like? What does Stevenson versus who? Gavotsky. The, the life that he was just talking about. Gavotsky. Yeah, the Ukrainian. Yeah, the Ukrainian guy. Yeah. You know, the Ukrainian guys are, are really, really tough guys. They got tough mentality and they got tough amateur backgrounds. You know, it all boils down to one thing. How well the God of it, God of it, God of it, it's, it's another way of saying it. Kowalski. Kowalski. Huh? Kowalski. Yes. It, it all boils down to how well he can take that left hand. If he can take that left hand, he's in the fight. And not many people that I've seen can take that left hand. He's got steel in that left hand. You know, so that's what it boils down to. Outside of that, I think he's going to get is going to get outboxed. He's going to get outboxed. Stevenson will get outboxed? Yes. The guy's going to outbox him. But down the stretch. I'm telling you, Stevenson is dangerous. He has a lethal left hand like I haven't seen in the light heavyweight division for many, many years. I mean, that is a powerful left hand. You know, it says sleep induced comas. <laughs> come from lethal drugs. He's got a lethal left hand that, that will induce sleep, I'm telling you. You know, I'm telling you, the guy's got a dangerous left hand. These old guys. So when, when is that fight scheduled to happen? I think it's coming up soon. Um, I've got something called my Myosola. Myosola says, um, "Are you? I'm. Sh I'm not sure if you're part of Team uh, Yard, and if you are, please let me know." He says, "I think Yard will take his time and won't be pressured into fights, even though they're mandatory. We all want to see him fulfill his potential. Yep, yeah, we do. But coming back to the Stevenson thing, um, yeah, that fight should be coming up soon. Eugene, can you let?" Yard, wait a minute. Yard is the number one contender. Need I say that again? He's the number one contender. They're going to say piss or get off the pot. You can't sit on the number one's throne and say, well, you know, I want to fight Joe Blow and Harry Splappy Doobie. Been, those guys have been fighting. But hold on. Oh. Uncle, Callum Smith, Callum Smith, in all due respect, had more experience as an amateur and sat on the WBC, a number one contender spot for ages, for absolute ages. We're talking about the WBO. We're talking about the WBO and, and Adonis Stevenson been sitting on the WBC for a long time and they let him get away with it. But the WBO, they're going to say fight. They're going to put him in a fight. They're not going to let him sit on that WBO. Now, he can relinquish the position. If they think that he's not ready for Alvarez, they, he can relinquish. I wouldn't do it. I'd fight. You there? You yep. got to fight. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you're in that position. You got to fight. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, that, that boy... That, um, I think that closes off this light heavyweight division. We talked about Bivol. Talked about the Bivol Chilimbe fight, did we not? Right. We talked about Stevenson. We've talked about uh, Kovalev and Alvarez. Um, I'll just close this off. The Chilimbe fight was just an exercise in the spawn. Man. Of course it was. <laughs> I told people that. I'm surprised Bivol didn't go for the knockout, to be honest. Hey, you know what? Every now and then, I'll go to 12 rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when Chalimba tasted that leather... He didn't want, to know, didn't want to know anything about it. He didn't want to know nothing else about it. He just 
thought to herself, you know, I'll go the distance and I'll remain in the top 10 and I'll make some more money, but I will not be the champion that long. This guy is being punching me. I'd like to see Bivol versus Joe Smith. Yeah, I think he'd do well. But I think Bivol will beat him. I think Bivol will stop Joe Smith. Quite possibly. But we're gonna see we're gonna see that there for for Anthony Yard. Yeah, I'd like to see I want to see Joe Smith versus the Anthony Yard. That's a fight with my team as well. Yeah, all the other two guys mentioned. Um, just to close, just to close off. Um, two things: Usyk and Bellew. Uh, Bellew thinks he can stop Usyk. I don't know where he thinks that, but he thinks he can beat. He thinks he can stop Usyk. What are your thoughts on that? No, I don't think that he can stop him. If anything, he has to try to decision him, but I don't think he can stop Usyk. I don't think so. And I like Tony Bell. I'm a Tony Bell fan, but I don't think you can stop him saying, you know, stopping who's is going to be unrealistic for me. Who's going to come in that range 214, 217, and, and uh, he's going to put something on Tony Bell. The fight, uh, they're going to fight at Cruiserweight, so I understand. Tony Bell is going to come down to Cruiserweight? Yeah. Well, he's going to be in some trouble. Tony Bell has been walking around as a heavyweight for the last, what, two years, 15 months? Yep. And now suddenly he's going to go down to 200 pounds. It's a, it's a, it's a prescription to get killed. <laughs> That's what that is, a prescription to get killed. He might as well go down to the pharmacy. It's a bitter prescription because I'm going to get killed. <laughs> yeah. He's been walking around at, at 220, 225 for the last nearly two years. He's, since since uh, the McCabe fight, he's been walking around at a heavyweight. And now he's going to go down to Cruiserweight to fight Alexander Usyk? No, I would tell Usyk, come on up, come up. That's what I'd be saying. But I understand that uh, Bellew wants to fight for the belt. Oh, he wants to fight for the belts? Yes. Oh, well. Maybe he knows something that I don't know, but I, I don't think so. I think who's that going to need to break off from down there? I think at heavyweight, he would have stood more of a chance, Bellew. Yeah. I think he would have stood a better chance. He, now he has to take off that weight, get down to the fighting weight at 200 pounds. I wonder how it's going to affect him. After not being there for two years, and Bob, who's it's going to be working that body? That's for sure. I just don't. I maybe you know something I don't know, <laughs> but oh. I don't. I don't see that happen. I, I would have just skip the bells, come up to to a heavyweight we'll fight. Uh, Usyk versus Joshua. A lot of people are talking about this fight. Oh, Joshua's too big and, and Usyk's too small. And Usyk, Usyk is six feet four. He's slick. He's quick. He's a boxer. It's a good fight. I looked at I looked at Joshua fight Parker, and I can tell watching that fight that Usyk could be in that fight with uh, Joshua. I can tell from watching Joshua versus Parker. When I was watching that fight, I was thinking, Usek belongs. Usek gonna come in, like I said, to go come in there between 215 to 217. And he's gonna be in a boxing match with Anthony Joshua. And and people are there has been another thing on the underestimate. His physical strength, he's a strong guy. Joshua's a big, muscular guy. Usek is a slimmer, muscular guy. But he's quick. He's durable. He's got a good chin. He's got a good heart. He's got a good boxing time. Yes. Yes, I see Usek being in the Joshua fight big time. 
There are people outside of boxing that know more about bo more about Usyk than you seem to know. <laughs> and you trained him. Please. They got no idea. People, people in your listening order, they better listen to me. I've trained him for three years. They don't understand the kind of human being that Usyk is. He's a special human being. He's a special human being. He's a special boxer. He's not your run-of-the-mill boxer. He's not one of those five and dime dollar store boxers. This guy is a serious player. They underestimate his mentality. They underestimate his spirituality. They underestimate his work ethic. They underestimate his boxing skill, his punch. I'm trying to tell you. People don't people I've had people uh, right on my page who said gets knocked out by Joshua in six rounds and because you don't know the man. I know the man. I know what Joshua is gonna be up against. All right? I'm not saying that Joshua is out of the fight. I'm not just saying that Joshua is gonna lay down. I'm not saying that Joshua is not gonna come in there with a competitive spirit because I know Joshua, he's a competitive guy. And he's not gonna be standing around letting some little guy coming from another division to take his belts. This is a nullified fight between Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk. Because Usyk is a prideful guy. He's coming from all of the marbles. When he says that he wants Joshua, he's serious. He's going to come in there and try to help Usyk the apple cart. Joshua is not having it. That's what makes this fight so exciting. So, you know, like, like, uh, uh, Deontay Wilder, hey, I wanted to see him and the Joshua fight, but I want to see Usyk and Joshua fight too. How does Usyk do against the uh, Wilder right hand? If Wilder can find him. If he can find him, Usyk doesn't stand around. He's not laying around, playing around. He's in, he's out, he's everywhere. He's a boxer. He realizes that he's a boxer puncher, not a puncher boxer. He relies on his boxing skills long before he gets on his punching skills. I think he got a really, really even better chance against uh, Wilder because Wilder, uh, Wilder weighed 220 pounds his last fight. So, yeah, I, I think that's. I think that Usek is, let me tell you something, I think Usek is in there with any of those guys. Billy White, Joseph Parker, Terrell Big Baby. I think Usek is in there with any one of those guys that want to get in with him. I think Usek, I think Usek puts the sport on a lot of those guys, I'm telling you. I know people you listen to the audience probably said that I'm on drugs. I must be drunk, right? But I am basing my opinion on what I know of the man that I trained for three years, Alexander Usek, is going to bring something to the heavyweight division that we ain't seen in years. And just to remind people, uh, how long, you say three years, so you, so when do you first take on Usyk? At the very beginning of his pro career. Okay. So but there you go. put in any kind of assessments, they need to go back and YouTube and look at his amateur career. He was always fighting big guys in the amateurs. Fighting big guys won't be brand new to Alexander who said, just go to YouTube and look at the big guys he fought in the amateurs. Okay. I just want to close this. Yeah, people say, oh man, but that was the amateurs. Those amateurs meant a lot because it was international competition. In the pros now, in the pros now, I don't see too much different from the amateurs, the way these pros is fighting. I see a lot of amateurs style in the pros now. Right. So it's just, it's, it's just going to be a little slight step up from Usyk. Okay. When I see Usyk in the in white, Joseph Parker, Jarrell Miller, I see Usyk in the ring with those guys and I see him giving a very very good account of himself and probably winning okay um 
I want to close this off with uh, somebody says, somebody said here, uh, traveling news, just don't understand why people can't see how great Tyson Fury is. He's level above anybody out there. I'll stick my reputation on it. Well, Tyson Fury's been out, what, two and a half years? Yep. It's been out two and a half years, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's a lot that he has to prove. There's a lot that he has to prove. I'm not saying that he can't. I'm not saying that he can't. But in my opinion, he has a lot to prove. He has a lot to prove. He has, I mean, he's taken off a lot of weight in a little bit of time. He's taken off a lot of weight in a little bit of time. He's been out nearly three years. So he has a lot to prove. Question. Um, he fights Pianetta next. You know who Pianetta is, obviously, because you were in the corner with Klitschko when he fought Pianetta. Um, Pianetta versus Fury's next. It's... Uh, I think a week from now in uh, in Belfast. How do you think that fight goes? Oh, that's a, I mean, I guess it's necessary on the comeback trail, but a Fury slaps Bianetta around. Fury slaps Bianetta around, stops him sixth or seventh round, and moves on. I, 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 I'm not even interested in that fight. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why I talk about this because I believe Wilder's going to be at the fight and I believe they're going to be announcing the fight after that for November, December. Mm -hmm. Wilder Fury, November, December, your thoughts? Good fight, but I think that Wilder catches him somewhere in the mix. Uh, he stops Fury. I don't think Fury is just physically back now if Fury came back in stop Wilder did I need my words I say well I thought that Wilder was gonna stop and I still stand by I think that Wilder stops him Wilder catches Fury somewhere in that fight what he does it ain't gonna be pretty especially if he puts pressure on, on, on Fury if he puts the pressure on him and fights if Wilder fights if Wilder don't want it being anything other than himself, just be himself, and he stops Fury. I think he clips Fury, and I think he'll stop him. I just think it's too soon for the fight. But like I said, Fury is a strange guy. You know, maybe you go in there and get, get lucky and, and, and stop Wilder. And I'd I, I stand to be correct. I said, well, I thought that Wilder was going to stop Fury, but Fury proved me wrong. I don't think that Fury is ready for a fight like that. Knows why? I don't think so. But um, a lot of a lot, lot of people, you know, experts, and they believe it. I, I think he needs more time. I think that I think that Fury is rushed. I think that Fury needs two, maybe three more fights to really get the weight off properly. Two. Maybe three more fights, depending on how he looks in two more fights. Now, Uncle, Sir, battery's about to cut out. Um, very quickly, the effects of a fighter that rushes to take the weight off, such as Fury, to make a big fight, what's the detriment? What happens? Just keep your eye on the sixth, seventh, eighth round, and I'll tell you. You'll be depleted. It's, it's, it's something when you come in the, in the corner and you got no oxygen. You got no energy, and you know you got four or five more rounds to go. People are still talking about a Vladimir Klitschko fight, and the Fury fans are just stuck in that Klitschko fight. They can't move on from that. They're still three years in the past. They keep talking about that Fury. Well, well, let me say this here. In the, in the Fury-Klitschko fight, neither one of them did shit. Vladimir didn't do nothing, and Fury was even worse because he's the young guy. He was the young guy. Fury did it, it, it wasn't what Fury did do with Latimer. Latimer, I'm saying, what was Fury, Fury did with what Latimer was going to do? Latimer didn't do nothing for whatever the reason. I don't know what it was, whether it was psychological, whether it was physical. I don't know what it was because he looked good again. But 
Oh, battery's gone. Unfortunately, we've lost Uncle Bashir, though. We did, I did tell him it was only 20 minutes we had, so we'll have to get Uncle Bashir back another time and follow up. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, there we go. Uh, for those people joining in, saying that few won't get credit for the uh, Klitschko performance, let's not go there. Um, this channel has always given Fury his credit for that Klitschko performance and predicted he would beat Klitschko. That's it from us. Thank you all for watching and uh, take care and be good. We're out.